Welcome to Art and Stories, brought to you by Happen Inc. My name is Jeff Ebler. I'm an author and an illustrator. I illustrate the comic series. I illustrate chapter books. And I've also written and illustrated a lot of picture books. Today, we will be reading Arlo Rolled. Now, Arlo Rolled is all about one of my favorite topics, gardening. And even though it's the middle of winter right now, I thought we could start things out in my garden. So this is my house and the tree house that I built for my kids. And next to it is our garden. Now this is the middle of winter, so you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit. Back in the summer, I had lots of plants growing in this garden. Like in these planters here, I had a bunch of tomato plants. It was a really good year for tomatoes. We got a lot of tomatoes. Next to those planters, I have my raised beds where I grow all kinds of different vegetables, like summer squash, and cucumbers, some carrots, maybe some more tomatoes, and of course, lots of peas. And next to that, I have a rain barrel where I can collect all the water that comes down on the shed roof to water my garden. Now back here, I have another planter, and you might notice that even though it's winter, there's still some kale that's growing really nicely. Kale loves cold weather. And then if you look to the left down this sidewalk, I have a compost bin where we put all of our vegetable scraps and apple peels and grass clippings and even some of the leaves that come down in fall. And all of that breaks down to form some really great soil that we can use to feed the garden. Arlo Rolled by Susan Pearson. And so our story starts off in a garden. A lot like the garden I just showed you, except this garden has lots of rock walls and a fountain and a little bridge. And you can see way in the background, there's a little whirly gig with a vine growing up it. At the garden, next to the berries, lived Mary, Gary, Terry, and Sherry, and Arlo. Five peas in a pod, a plump, fat green group, perfect for salads and stir fries and soup. So you can see there's the vine and the pea pod with Arlo and all of his brothers and sisters. And Arlo is jumping out of the pea pod saying, No way! Stir fries and soup are no life for me. I want to grow up and find out what I'll be. So he dropped to the ground with the tiniest sound. Plop! And Arlo rolled past cucumbers and a red spotted bug. And you can see, here he comes, you can follow the dotted line, plop, Arlo drops to the ground and he rolls past the cucumber and the red spotted bug until he bumped into a hungry gray slug. Stay for a while, said the slug, if you please. Ask anyone here, I adore peas. But Arlo's not gonna fall for that. He rolls right away from that slug. Not on your life. Goodbye. Being lunch for a slug is no life for me. I want to grow up and find out what I'll be. He rolled through some poppies and lamb's ears and pinks. But what was that smell? Harlow wondered, what stinks? Then two nasty pincers reached out to stab him. A stink bug was just about ready to grab him. So you can see here's Arlo rolling past all the flowers and he rolls right up to the stink bug. Now stink bugs are about this big, but peas are like this big. So a stink bug is huge to a pea. What a disaster. Arlo rolled faster. Past iris and peonies, Arlo rolled on. Right out of the garden and onto the lawn. A pea on a spree in the spring. What a fling. So you can see here, Arlo is bouncing off the garden wall and up into the air, flying high with all of the grasshoppers. What have we here? Said a deep voice. Hello. No one admires a pea like a crow. Oh no. Thought Arlo. I have a hunch that old Mr. Crow would like me for lunch. Arlo did not wait around for a minute. A crow was nice only if he wasn't in it. 
So you can see here, Arlo's hiding under a rock and look how huge the crow is. Cause you can imagine if a pea is this small, how big a crow would be. And then an army of ants came along in a line. Snack attack, snack attack, they all said with a whine. But Arlo was bigger and bolder and fast. He rolled right on past. Ahead was a puppy digging a hole, frantically trying to capture a mole. Puppy dug, hole grew, pebbles sprayed, dirt blew, puppy kicked, Arlo flew! So you can see here, the puppy is digging up the dirt and shoo, Arlo is flying up into the air, sailing way up into the air past the crow who's flying away and we can see the whole garden below, all the places that Arlo has traveled. He sailed to a field where he dropped with a plop, rolled into a wall and came to a stop. I want to grow up and find out what I'll be, but right now I'm pooped. And he fell fast asleep. And so here's Arlo sleeping in the dirt. And you can see Arlo slept and it's fall and he slept. And now we can see that there's snow coming down. It's winter time and slept. And you can see the snow has gone away and it's starting to become spring. There's a little earthworm. And what's happening to Arlo the whole time? He's starting to grow into a plant. Who knew that while he slept, Arlo grew? And now look, it's springtime and Arlo is a plant growing out of the ground. And one sunny day, Arlo woke up and he stretched and he stretched towards the sun. It felt fine. Now watch me. He shouted and started to twine up the wall. I'm a vine. Now I made this page go up and down because I wanted to show how tall Arlo is growing. So usually we're reading the book like this, but on this page, we turn it this way so we can see how tall he is. Arlo was so happy he blossomed. The sun shone warm, the breeze blew. Arlo grew and grew and grew. His blossoms fell, but in their places, dangling from their empty spaces, were pea pods. And so look, Arlo is all grown up and he's got peas of his own. Now over the field, next to the wall, live Molly and Holly and Dolly and Paul and Arlene. So like I told you, I didn't write Arlo Roll. So when I get a new story from an author, the first thing I do is I read the story and I really tried to think about all of the things that the author was trying to tell us in the story. And so after I've sketched all of my characters, then I will start figuring out how I want every page in the book to look. I will do little tiny sketches called thumbnails that are only about this big, just to figure out where I want everything to go and how I want everything to look. And I will turn those thumbnail sketches into larger sketches, kind of like this. After I'm finished with all of my sketches, I'll put those sketches on some watercolor paper and I will turn those sketches into paintings, kind of like this. So you can see here, this is the very last page where Arlo is all grown up into a pea plant and there are all of his little baby peas. And so after I finished all those paintings, I will pack them all up in the mail and I will send them off to the publisher. That's the place where they make the books. And they will take photographs of all of those paintings and they will turn those paintings into a book. So you can see here is the painting I did, and this is what it looks like when they put it in the book. Now Arlo was kind of interesting because every character in this book are peas, right? They're just little circles with faces. And so I had to think of lots of ways to make each pea look unique. So you could tell which one was Arlo and which ones were his brothers and sisters. I had to find lots of ways to tell them all apart. One of the easiest ways to give your character personality is where you decide to put the eyes and the mouth. So let's draw a green circle for Arlo's head and put the eyes and the mouth right in the middle. Now that looks okay, but what would it look like if we move the eyes up and then the mouth too? He looks a lot different, right? What if we move the mouth down all the way to the bottom? Now he looks a lot different. He kind of looks like a frog, doesn't he? What if we move the eyes all the way down to the bottom? Now he's got a really big forehead. Or maybe we could make the eyes closer together. 
that looks different, or maybe we could move the eyes way far apart. Just simply moving the eyes and mouth around a little bit can give our character so many different personalities. One of my favorite things about writing children's books is getting the chance to go to schools and libraries and reading my books to kids and getting to see their reactions. And I always hope that I might be an inspiration for kids to write their own stories or make their own pictures. So hopefully things will get back to normal next year. But until then, please consider me for Zoom meetings for your local school and library. Thanks for watching Art and Stories. Goodbye. If you'd like to purchase a signed copy of Arlo Rolled, please contact Tish Gale at Inscribe Books and Gifts. Thank you. Bye.